Hello, my name is Alison Wheatley from the Organisational Development Team here at Mid Cheshire Hospitals Foundation Trust. Welcome to Motivate. This is a recorded webinar designed to take you through what Motivate is, how to use it and also what the benefits are for you and your team. So please stand by while I share my slides with you. OK, there's going to be a few things that you're going to need before we start this uh, training. Uh, you might want to get together a Motivate host pack and also a copy of the Motivate documentation as well. There's several places you can find this, as you can see listed on the screen there. If you've done any um, online strategy manager training recently or any other training, um, you may have visited the Learning Zone. Um, if you go onto the Learning Zone, you'll see a, an icon called All Courses and Resources. And if you then click on the re Leadership Resources, you'll find all the details of Motivate in there, plus other alongside other leadership resources that you might find useful. You can also have a look on the new SharePoint intranet. So if you open it all up, you'll get the Teams and Projects um, menu at the top. And then you just need to click on the appraisals icon that will come up after that. Or you could go old school on the old intranet, looking at the learning and development learning zone. Um, you'll find it in there in the appraisals part. And you could also look on the frequently used forms as well for the documentation. You might also wish to gather yourself together as well, a pen um, and maybe some notepaper and pad as well, just in case you might need to make an additional notes along, along, as you go along. So this might be the first time that you've undertaken this kind of learning. Um, but remember, it's just as important as face to face learning. So make sure that you're in a place where you're free from distractions. You might want to turn off those emails to distract um, to turn off the phone as well um, and make sure that you're able to focus and concentrate. However, this way of learning does have its advantages, so if you do need to stop, do feel free to pause uh, and I'll be here ready and waiting when you get back. So you might be wondering why we've moved on from appraisals. Um, you might not know, but the appraisals have actually featured on our National Staff Survey Action Plan for Improvement since 2014. Also, it was clear from the staff surveys that you've told us that you would like more feedback and better quality feedback as well. So there's uh, several reasons for us wanting to do something, but in order to know what to do, we had to do a trust wide appraisal review, first of all, just to find out what was actually good about the process, what's not so good, but also looking as well about what other trusts were doing and maybe as well looking outside of that, outside of the NHS to see what the rest of the world is doing in terms of appraisals. Our aim was to try and make things better for everyone and make it a more useful and valuable use of our time. So through the review, we did find a number of things. Uh, we found out that uh, you felt that the appraisal was an isolated uh, once a year event. Um, so you were receiving none or very little feedback outside of the appraisal meeting and also objectives um, were set at the beginning of the year in the, in the appraisal. Time was passing and then a few weeks before the next one um, out they came um, and you were looking at them reviewing them and that was true for at least half of the organisation. We also found that there was a lot of focus on the paperwork as well. And many felt it was too much, certainly in some of the versions we've had in the past of the appraisal paperwork. But people seem very focused on it and most time was spent on this really rather than the actual conversation. There was a lot of people talking about hitting those HR compliance targets as well. So basically we're doing it to be compliant to rather than actually having a meaningful conversation about development and reflecting on our practice. Alongside all that, they were identifying training needs as well, which were often not met. Um, now, it's possibly because they were forgotten about over the year. Um, sometimes it was to do with funding as well. Um, so there's was, there was many different reasons for that. And, but one of the main reasons we found was that um, people had a quite a narrow view about what training needs are, and what development is, um, thinking about what courses to book on, for instance, uh, rather than thinking of any other ways um, of developing uh, themselves or their staff. So the verdict was that we could do better. Because what is really scary is that actually considering all the prep time 
and actually conducting appraisals as well. It does cost us around about £200,000 a year in time alone. So we do need to make it more worth our time. So we've got to think about what we're going to do instead. We don't we want to say goodbye to that old annual appraisal that was isolated, rigid, bit of a paper exercise for many. And what we want to do is say hello to short, useful feedback conversations that are more regular throughout the year. We want to see those smiley faces like we can see on the screen there. So how are we going to achieve this? I'd like to introduce Motivate to you, but you might be thinking, what is Motivate? What it is, is all our colleagues experiencing the benefits of those regular, short and meaningful conversations throughout the year. And there's several benefits for this as well. Conversations are more forward looking and the real time and the more rather than being focused on the distant past. And that is really important. We are working in the NHS, which changes very, very quickly and it changes very regularly as well. Something that we are reviewing something once a year, um, it's, it, it, it doesn't really uh, doesn't really help us uh, with developing. Um, it also is difficult to remember over the last year as well. I don't know about you, but I do struggle to do, remember what I did a few days ago, never mind thinking about a year ago. So a more regular system will definitely help with that. It improves job performance as well. Um, as if we're frequently setting and reviewing objectives rather than just doing it once a year. It's, it shows as well, if we um, the places that have done this, that it increases staff engagement as well. So these frequent check-ins, it gives people individual attention. And studies year after year show that relationships with a line manager really impacts on staff engagement. So the Motivate system really does help with that. It does increase as well the number of staff recommending their organisation as a place to work. We want people to be happy working here and having regular check ins with our colleagues is going to help pe make people feel like this is a good place to work. Research has also shown where people have where organisations have taken on systems like this, the staff are less likely to leave or go off sick with stress. And that's simply because they feel more supported through the regular check ins um, and nothing's left to fester over a long time as well. One of the great benefits of Motivate System is it's more flexible and it can be timed to suit the individual and their area of work. The appraisals were a lot longer, the harder to fit in and they're much more prescriptive as well. Motivate can be flexed to suit. Um, you can choose a particular area motivate. You don't have to follow it exactly as it says. You might want to focus on um, certain areas more than others in certain motivates. So you might want to cover them over the year rather than doing all of them every single time. It really is up to you on what you feel um, would benefit you and your, your people. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it now. Um, and just to be clear, the motivate does replace the traditional annual praise. It's not as well as. Um, so that's that's always good news. And we find that they are typically uh, less than 30 minutes in length, as you might find somewhere in about 15 minutes when you get really going with them. Um, sometimes it might go slightly over. It really does depend on the individual and what's going on with them. We would like you to aim for doing them at least three times a year. And really any less than that, you're not really going to get that frequent and timely um, feedback or um, looking at objectives in a, in, a, in a frequent and timely manner either. So you won't feel the benefits as much um, if you do it less than this. The focus of Motivate is on job performance and behaviours and objectives, so really reflecting upon those. Um, so it helps to facilitate those open and honest upfront conversations that you might need to have um, and also helps with the getting those timely objectives that appraisals just couldn't deliver with that once a year. You'll notice it's all the elements of a good appraisal uh, within the Motivate, um, but it's got that fresh look, it's done more often, it's a lot more flexible. There is a simple two sided document. We're going to show you that in just a moment, unless you've already got it in front of you, of course. Um, and there's some optional extras as well, such as the moments of brilliance, revalidation checklist, or there's a closer look at the uh, trust values and behaviours for those that need it. You'll notice that there's um, the conversation is the focus um, of the of the whole thing. It is really not about the paperwork at all. So these additional documents are really optional. You don't have to use them. 
You'll notice there's a change in language as well. Appraisers are known as hosts in the Motivate um, and appraisees are known as colleagues. And we do you know, hope that you try to uh, take on this language as well. So we're moving on to a new chapter with, with, the, um, with, with, with performance management. So just to tell you a little bit more about the documentation, um, just like an appraisal, you would use a new copy uh, for each Motivate. There is no formal written preparation requirement, and which is great news, isn't it? Um, but what, what you will need is time to think, both of you, both yourself as a host and also your colleague as well. And it is really, really important. You can't skip on this. You need to think about this. It doesn't have to be a massive amount of time. It could just be 15 minutes, um, but it's just having a little think about for you as a host, what sort of um, feedback you would like to share and how you're going to position that as well. And some, bring some ideas, maybe perhaps for future objectives as well. Notes, any notes that you make on the um, documentation should be brief. We don't want essays. We don't need to have and have really massively long full sentences as long as it makes sense to you. And when you look back at it again, you um, completely understand where what, what was what was talked about last time. So they could be handwritten. There's an option to handwrite them or you can type them as you go. There is a, um, an editable word version of the document available as well. Just be careful that if you are going to be typing onto computer as you go, don't let that get in the way of the conversation. Um, you know, you really do need to be a focus of a good conversation. Alternatively, some hosts like to complete the documentation in the closed summary uh, instead uh, to summarise the conversation. So they really are focusing on that throughout rather than the paperwork. Just like appraisals, um, you're going to need to have the, the, the documentation shared as well um, with the, the, your colleague that you're doing it with and making sure that you are storing it securely. You might have hard copies or it could be electronic. It really does depend how you how you like to work in your area. So here is a look at the documentation now. Um, hopefully you've got a copy in front of you that you can see and you can see it is really quite simple. You've got your usual things that you need at the top there, name, um, position band, etc., signature bar. Um, there's a place to put which uh, motivate number of session it is, um, obviously number one for your first one and so on. Uh, you'll notice the performance assessment coloured bar across the middle, which you just circle or uh, which ones are applicable. We'll come more about that later. And then you'll notice we've got uh, the reflection section here. Uh, where you can summarise reflections and then we've got the host feedback summary here as well and it has got some um, prompts on there to help you out with these. At the bottom you'll notice that we've got the uh, trust uh, behaviours at the bottom there to remind you. So on the back uh, you'll see the values and behaviours at the top there and a simple red amber green rating uh, to help you to assess that. A space for your objectives um, and, you know, if you feel like you don't, you've, you've written objective on one motivate, don't feel like you've got to rewrite it again on the next, you may just wish to number them and then just write the number on there just to cut back on the writing as well. Um, we've also got further down, uh, we've got the uh, statutory and mandatory uh, training compliance, whether you are up to date or in progress or not up to date, and also the individual um, is the meeting the competencies necessary for their roles. So we'll, we'll have a chat about that a little bit later as well. Another well, you see the, the trust values at the bottom as well, just to remind you of those as we go. OK, so there's several documents available to support you to hold an effective Motivate conversation, which you'll find um, on the various places that I talked about earlier on. You've got in front of you now, hopefully, um, the host pack, which is over here. Um, and there's also a colleague pack as well, which is a bit more a simplified version, uh, much more simplified version of the host pack explaining from the colleague's point of view what it is that they um, need to be, what they're going to be expecting, what's the process and what their role and responsibilities in the process. Now, if you are an experienced appraiser or even after this training, you may wish to use this document. You may wish to use the quick start two page guide, um, which is a really good way just to get going really quickly. Um, but it's also a great aid memoir as you're doing uh, your motivates as well. Obviously, you're going to need a copy of the latest documentation, and it's also a good idea and useful to have um, copies of the um, our strategic priorities, our trust level ones, and also your local level priorities, which is more your divisional level or CCICP, um, and also your team objectives um, as part of the motivator as well to refer to.
There are also other documents that you may wish to use, uh, depending on the individual. Again, a lot of these are optional or just for reference. So I'm just going to draw attention to the number three one there, the celebrate. Um, but we'll talk about that more in, in, the step, in the step three there. But you might wish to have one of these for each of your uh, colleagues who we do motivate with. Uh, we've got the uh, performance rating reference sheet here, which would be useful for each motivate. Some people may need the number four one here, behaviours record sheet, um, but that is very much optional uh, depending on what rating you awarded um, together as far as the uh, red, amber, green uh, for the values and behaviours. Um, we've also got over here a revalidation checklist, obviously, for those that need it. So actually, how do you actually hold a motivate conversation? Um, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it now. Um, please remember, you're going to need your host pack now, but do pause and I will ask you to pause um, quite a few times for you to read the relevant pages uh, and then you, you've fully got all the information you need before we get started um, talking about the best practice side of things. OK, so. On page three of your host pack, you'll find a contents page. So you see step one is welcome. So what that basically is, is about getting the best conditions for a great conversation before it actually happens. It's also welcoming the uh, your colleague to the motivate as well. Step two, reflect. This is kind of the main part, really, of the motivate. It's based on four simple questions, which you've probably seen on the documentation, with an option to expand um, as well uh, those, those questions. We also get to assess performance as well as part of this step. Step three, celebrate, is a really, you know, really nice step. Um, it's about fully appreciating the eff efforts of our colleagues, about them going above and beyond and really celebrating that. We call them moments of brilliance. Um, I'm hoping that you uh, you take on that word in and, and promote it in your areas as well. So we've got also step four, the values and behaviours where we're assessing against the red, amber, green. Um, we've got step five, objectives and professional compliance. Uh, it's one or two small scale smart objectives linking to the golden thread. And I'll tell you more about that later if you're not sure what I mean by that. We've got step six host feedback, which is an interesting section because it isn't actually a standalone section, as it suggests. It does um, go right the way through all of uh, the different um, to the whole conversation. You'll be given feedback throughout. Uh, step seven, the close summary is final, but it is uh, the final sort of section of the conversation. But it is still important and it's where we summarise uh, the feedback and agreed actions before closing. And then you've got step eight, which is record, which is about signing the documentation, getting the copies, and also that important entering the date onto ESR, which we'll, we'll talk about in a, towards the end. Um, so the next section, we're going to study each step in turn. So, you know, get your host packs at the ready. OK, so if you notice on page four, you'll see step one, welcome. Um, so remember to pause if you need to. Um, in fact, it might be a good idea to pause now uh, and take a read of page four. So you'll notice the key learning points uh, on, on the slide. They're um, starting off with um, holding a pre-meet. Now, you might not be familiar with doing something like this, uh, but what this does, it's just really meeting up with anybody who's new to Motivate. Um, and it's only the first time that you have to do this, really. Uh, and it could be a, with a, a few colleagues, it doesn't have to be with, with one particularly. It's just really talking through them, making sure they understand what the process is about, what their roles and responsibilities are, giving them a copy of the documentation, the colleague pack, um, and just so making sure that they're fully uh, understanding what's expected of them during the conversation and what to expect from you. Some of the other things you'll notice are very similar um, the things that you would do uh, before an appraisal to try and create that best starting point that you can. Things like choosing a suitable venue where you're not going to get disturbed, agreeing that uh, date and time for the meeting as well. It's really important that you plan ahead in your diaries. So if you know we're going to be doing them three times a year, plan them ahead after this training session and get them all booked into the diary. Doesn't mean they're set in stone and they have to stay there, um, but it, it would be um, it would mean that you wouldn't forget them. They're coming up. You'll, you're more likely to rearrange them around the time um, than, and, and then leave them and forget them altogether. So it's really important that you, know, you do you, you time it to suit and because it's flexible, you can move it around quite easily. 
So if this is not the, the first motivate, you would be considering previous motivates. If it's your first one, you'd be thinking about um, over the, the last few months, really thinking about the colleague that you're going to be having the motivate with, um, thinking about what feedback you might like to give, and um, thinking about what sort of possible objectives you, we, we could suggest, um, thinking about the professional compliance. It's just having a little, little, a little time just to go through all that so you're ready for it. Um, and it's also then at that point, then you, you'll make sure you, you welcome them, the person to the motivate and checking that they're, they're happy to proceed as well. Um, at, if not, you might get to the conversation and realise actually they're not um, they're not in the right frame of mind for this or there's a lot going on. Um, don't be afraid to change and reschedule that for later in the day or another day if suitable, because um, it's really important that they're in the right frame of mind for these kind of conversations. Uh, otherwise, it could end up. Um, not being uh, as productive as you want it to be, or it might not even be as positive as you want it to be either. Um, so it's all really things that you would consider, isn't it, that you would for um, an appraisal really generally the welcome is. So step two is all about reflection. Now, for reflection for some colleagues, some colleagues may be quite unfamiliar to them. Maybe the questions on the appraisal documentation may be the closest they have ever experienced to reflection. But really, reflection with a person is, is going to be much better than filling out a form. So whilst researching and preparation for this webinar, I came across this uh, quote and I really liked it because I thought it really explained really well what reflection is about how it tells us how it's making sense of, of things to help us move forwards, helps us come to decisions. Um, but my favourite part, I think, is where it talks about challenging ourselves to switch off that autopilot, getting out of the habits. So it's really easy just to carry on doing what we do uh, and not, not stopping and thinking. And Motivate really does give you that chance to do that. Um, so that, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's a really, really important step of, uh, of the Motivate conversation. So now I want you to look at page five of your host pack. I want you to pause this video and, and have a read. So first of all, you'll notice that there's, there's four simple questions. What's gone well since you last motivate? Are you celebrating success? How would you rate your performance since the last motivate? What have you found tricky since the last motivate? So it's a chance to reflect and learn. And what support, if any, do you need? So actually, the last question there about support, it could be a focus on health and well-being. And actually, it might be a great opportunity at One Motivate to do this health and well-being conversation that we're now required to do for every single one of our colleagues as part of the NHS People Plan. So it's another, another benefit to motivate. So um, following each of the questions, the simple questions that you're asking, it's really important that we explore the answer that the, our colleague gives us. It wouldn't be very effective if you were to ask a question and then they answer the question and then you just go on and answer the, ask the next question without further exploration. It tends it ends up being a bit of a bad interview more than anything. So it's really important that we use um, other coaching style questions to try and uh, tease out a little bit more thought, get them to reflect a bit deeper um, so we can help reflect more on, on their performance and their behaviours. So if you're looking at pages six and seven, you'll notice there's a quite a substantial list of ideas for questions that you could use to try and enhance the conversation, all in that coaching style, which is a really great way to help people to reflect. If you're not too sure about coaching style questions and how to have a good coaching conversation, you might want to have a look at our coaching resources on the learning zone as well, um, in the same place as you'll find the Motivate uh, materials. Or you can, you can also book onto a Coaching Essentials workshop as well, um, which may also help you with this. So you'll notice that when you're having these conversations, that each conversation is very different. It's going to be very dependent on the person's mood, on the time available that you have, but also the depth of their original reflections. As I say, some people um, are very reflective they will ask them the first question and they'll be away and they'll talk for quite some time. Others, not so much. You'll ask the question, you will, um, you'll get an answer and it'll be a short one. And you will really need to think about some of those questions. So beforehand, if you know that you may have someone in your team who may be a little quieter like that, you may wish to think about what sort of questions you might want to ask in advance. 
So the host role is also, um, it's important that you contribute with uh, positive feedback as well throughout. Um, so as they're reflecting, obviously don't interrupt, give them plenty of time to talk, but at the right point, it might be a good time for you to um, give some feedback as well, particularly if it's in agreement with some of the things that they're saying. Make sure it's very specific. Uh, we don't want any vague, you know, keep it up, great work and all the rest of it. You might want to use the BIC model, behaviour, impact and consequence. Uh, which will find more information in step six and we'll look at that a little bit later um, and that will help you to structure your feedback so it's really has a great impact. So the third, just looking, jumping to the third question, we'll look at the second in just a moment. What have you found tricky since you last motivate? The, the wording for that was, was chosen very, very carefully. We didn't want to say what's not gone well. For the start, it, it makes it very negative just to start us off. We want it to be a positive and productive conversation. So the word tricky was carefully chosen because sometimes it's not necessarily that it's not going well, but it could be that um, it's just been a bit challenging. Uh, it's not gone according to plan. Um, and it, what we want to do is to think about those situations and what have we learned as a result of these experiences? Has there been any barriers, things that have got in the way? Could we have done something differently or would we do something differently next time? What you need to do as a host is to create the safe space to learn um, that's free from blame. You're trying to create psychological safety, basically. Now, if this is a new concept to you, you might want to check out, again, check out our resources. We've got webinars about um, psychological safety that you'll definitely want to check out. So don't forget as well, final point there, remember the no surprises rule. If you're an experienced appraiser, you probably know about this. You know not to introduce any new feedback at a appraisal conversation, particularly negative feedback. Anything you discuss at Motivate is, is really, um, you're talking about things that have happened. Uh, so you don't want to be sort of surprising your colleague with something, oh, by the way, um, I wasn't, this, this didn't go very well, did it? When actually you've not had that conversation with them outside of the Motivate. Um, it's really important that it's a couple of reasons. As a leader, it's expected that you give timely feedback. Um, that you make sure that you you give feedback in the moment or as close to the moment it, it happens uh, that's, that's appropriate to do so. Um, just so it, otherwise it's just not as effective uh, talking about something that's happened weeks ago. The other reason is as well, if you start to introduce uh, negative feedback uh, as part of a motivate, which is um, a surprise that they didn't know was coming, you'll have your colleagues starting to fear them and they'll beginning to get very worried about coming to a motivate session worried that you're going to surprise them with something unpleasant. Uh, so make sure that you, you know, make sure that you don't do that and that you tackle anything uh, at the time rather than waiting. Just going to go back now to the um, section, uh, the question two. How would you rate your performance? So uh, this is a chance to review job performance together. So on page 22 of your host pack, you'll notice the performance rating support document, which I showed you a bit of a quick picture of before as well. I'd like to pause the video now and just have a read of that, just so you've got your head around it. So it's really a good idea to have this with you when you uh, do every motivate and you can use it to refer to as you go. And you're helping your colleague to choose a most appropriate rating for themselves rather than you telling them what you think. Of course, you can share what you think, um, but it's, it's, it's important that they also think about this as well. Often one level will be most suitable and that's fine. But then so there might be times when you might uh, do choose two levels, uh, which again is, is also OK. Um, for example, you might um, have a colleague who is meeting expectations across everything that they do, but actually they're exceptional at certain elements of the role and they're exceeding that, and that's something to celebrate. Another uh, example could be that they are quite fairly new to the role, it's been like nearly 12 months, uh, perhaps in the role, they're, they're partly meeting expectations, it's quite a complicated role, but they actually are meeting expectations in some of the role as well. And again, so it's just, it's just really an, an open and honest look at uh, um, this, the, the truth really, where they're up to at that moment in time. Probably the best thing you can do in, for this conversation is to ask them first, um, where, wh which rating do they feel is, is the best fit for them? or which ratings would be the best fit for them and get them to think about that and justify that and talk about it. 
Do avoid though saying to them, why have you chosen that level? The word why can be quite confrontational. So try switching why questions to what questions. So maybe you might say, what rating fits you best, you think? And then that again takes away that, uh, that, that and kind of worry that they feel they may have got it wrong in some way. Because at the end of the day, there is no right or wrong on this. Is, this is, you know, it's all about discussion between you, about what you think uh, between you is the best level for this person. We try to make it so it is flexible. So you can make the feedback, you can actually get a level that is specific and tailored to the individual rather than trying to force them into a box. So do try and use that. I don't feel like you've got to try and push them into just one. If they, if they go over more than one, that's absolutely fine. And once you've uh, agreed it, you'll be able to circle it on the, or to circle the appropriate ones on that bar on the documentation there. And then in the host feedback section here, you'll be able to justify obviously very briefly um, you can justify um, what the reasons for your choices were on there but during this step of reflection you can often conversations can lead on to future career aspirations which which is great um, but at this point then you could offer a reaching your potential or talent conversation in the future to help them realize their ambition through this which is a targeted and specific development conversation if you want to know more about this, you can look at the NHS Leadership Academy's Talent Management Hub online. Um, there's lots of information on there and support videos to help you have a great, great conversation with that. We've also got our own documentation around this, which you'll find on the new, uh, new intranet if you look on that appraisals page uh, that I was talking about earlier on. OK, so if you're looking on page eight now of your host pack, uh, you will see step three, celebrate. It's one of my favourite steps. So research has shown that uh, people feel more valued, motivated and engaged if their hard work is recognised and they're appreciated for their efforts. So as well as uh, celebrating good performance, as you, as you have done in the reflection side of things, you can also celebrate exceptional moments as well, or moments of brilliance, as we call them in Motivate. It doesn't have to be um, a standalone uh, section, you know, you might find this naturally falls into the reflection side of things, but you can use this table, uh, which is on the, in the appendix on page 23, to briefly record um, some of these. That is an optional thing, you don't have to use it. Um, just make sure that there is plenty of that positive feedback and these moments of learning are shared as well if you, don't, if you choose not to use this form. But you may wish to create a bit of a um, moments of brilliant sharing in your teams uh, that will be really helped with the sharing with the positive feedback and creating that positive feedback culture um, you might encourage other hosts in your team to share and other colleagues to share mobs with each other so that for them to be shared at the relevant motivates as well um, and that can really make it a much more a special time as well when it comes to uh, delivering it in the in the um, moment if, if somebody else has actually passed it on as well OK, so in step four, uh, there's the values and behaviours. And so this is on page nine of your host back. So if you just pause the video now and have a, a bit of a read uh, and then we will carry on. So you'll all be familiar with our shared values and behaviours, which you know, they guide the way we work every day. And we should be constantly striving to promote these day in, day out. Um, within our teams. Um, so Motivate is really, really great for reinforcing this um, and helping us to encourage, uh, encourage us to reflect upon these on a, on a you know, day-to-day -day basis as well. So the easiest way to do this really is to focus on the behaviours, um, out, out of the values and behaviours, and having a short discussion in the Motivate around how they've been de demonstrated. So we want to encourage the colleague to talk about how they feel that they've met our behaviours, um, but also as a host, it's a good chance for you to as well, give some great feedback, um, hopefully, I'm sure all great, um, about how they are meeting um, our, our values and behaviours as well. You'll notice on the documentation, it's a really simple red, amber, green rating um, for that. And you'll find the descriptions of what each of those mean on page nine, which I'm sure you've already read in your host pack. Most of your colleagues will be green, which is great. Uh, however, we, we will have you know, some colleagues who may need more support with this. 
And for that, there is the additional behaviours record sheet. So if you flick to page 24 and 25 of your host pack, you'll see that in the appendix there. Um, and it's just a, a sheet that you can use. It's not to be used for everybody. This is really for only those who either got ambers or, or reds as far in some of their um, behaviours. Um, and really, it's a chance to use that form then to record any discussions um, and to track progress over the motivate. So you'd use that same sheet over the course of the year, perhaps. Um, and as they almost just to keep track of, of, of where they are with that. Of course, if they are, um, if you deem them that will feel that they are red, this should not be a surprise uh, or even Amber should not be a surprise at the motivate. It's something you should have already talked about and do seek advice from your HR advisors um, should you be thinking about uh, that some of these behaviours um, are, are not uh, where you want them to be and you feel like you need support. So on page 10 and 11, uh, you'll find the step five objectives and professional compliance. So if you again, if you'd like to pause uh, your video and just have a little bit of a read of those two pages and then uh, well, we'll talk about it a little more. So you'll notice and you would have read and hopefully you know we've got a vision here at Mid Cheshire to deliver excellence in healthcare through innovation and collaboration. We've got strategic priorities to help us achieve this, uh, but we need to create this what's called a golden thread throughout the organisation to do this. So what this is, what is this golden thread? It's where we link those, those uh, trust level strategic priorities and we're linking them to the local level strategic plans. Uh, so they're directly linked there, which then link the objectives are then informed by these uh, for our teams and then in turn, the individual motivate objectives are set, therefore creating that golden thread throughout the organisation. So in the first motivate, you will need to discuss this. So it's good to have the copies of these available so you can show, um, show the, your colleague, help them to understand what their role and what their contribution is. Um, and it's important to have, you know, keep the copies with you as well, because you might need to revisit that at some point um, in other motivates. But don't feel like you've got to explain it every single time. It really um, is probably fully explained in the first time. So if you're familiar with objective setting and appraisals, uh, you'll notice this is quite a similar process. But what we're going to do instead instead of thinking of what am I going to do for an entire year, we're just thinking over a few months. So we're thinking of shorter term and smaller goal set. Um, as you're having more frequent discussions, so there's no need to set huge ones. Of course, you can have uh, ambitious ones that you were going to be working on, but break those down into smaller, um, smaller chunks that you can then um, revisit and, and talk about and review at each motivate. What this does is it makes it more current, uh, keeps momentum in progression as well, and therefore it keeps, it keeps us motivated, hence the title of, of, of this system. Um, so the slide that you can see there, it summarises the method that you've been reading about on uh, pages 10 and 11. So it's just really making sure that the objectives that we set are smart and the guidance is in there in case you're not, if you're not familiar with that or you, you need to brush up on that. Um, the objectives that you set, you know, they can be personal development objectives or they can be supporting team objectives. Don't set too many. Um, it's only a few months that you, you're going to be doing this over and obviously don't make them too big as well. Um, you have, again, it's over a shorter period of time and also makes them more achievable if they're obviously smaller to, smaller to do. And if they're more achievable, that's obviously makes it um, makes you feel good when you when you can actually achieve them um, quicker as well, which is great. So there might be some people that you might be struggling to think of a pray, think of any um, objectives for them for their motivate. They may have been here an awful long time. They are performing at 100% capacity in their role. Um, this is the point where you might be thinking, if that is the case, is the service at 100%? And you know, if um, I'm assuming that probably not, there's always some improvements to be made. Uh, so that their objectives may be more aligned to the the team. Um, if indeed there is nowhere, nothing else for them to do as far as their personal performance. You can also, though, in case you know, because there might be something, check out pages 12 and 13. You'll see a list of possible development opportunity ideas. Um, so what we really wanted to get across here was that it, there is more to development than, than booking onto a course. Um, there's lots and lots of things you can be doing. Um, this could be shadowing that you can be doing. Um, there's personal research. 
uh, there's there's all sorts of different things. So if you have a, a read over those, um, you may also wish to uh, develop your own list uh, for your your particular um, profession that you work in. There may be other things that you can add to this and, and develop as a group of hosts in your area as well, uh, so that you've got even more ideas to be to be going up. Finally, as part of step five, uh, you should review uh, the, the following on the screen there, um, if applicable as well. So the statutory manager training compliance, is it red, which is non-compliant, are they amber, are they in progress with that, um, or the green, they actually fully compliant, which we hope that everyone is green. Um, so we've also got job role competencies to think about as well. Do they have all those job competencies to fill their, fulfill their role? Um, if not, is that going to, that should inform the objectives for you. If you're not sure, look at the job description. Um, you know, it might be a good time to update those job descriptions if they need doing, and then you can really be sure that, um, that uh, they are following those job competencies as required. There's also a revalidation checklist as well, um, if required, obviously not required for everybody. Um, if you are subject to revalidation or your colleagues are, have a look at page 27. Uh, it's just a really brief document where you can track progress and record any discussions around a revalidation. So page 14, um, you'll find step six, host feedback. So I'm just going to give you, if you have a couple of minutes now, just to pause and have a read and then come back to me. So, do you share enough positive feedback with your colleagues, do you think? Do you wish you had more positive feedback yourself from your line manager? It's definitely a good thing to have. Research, uh, recent research from Lasada and Hefe shows that high performing teams, and we all would like to be part of those, they share nearly six times more positive feedback than the average team. Six times more positive feedback. Wow. Meanwhile, low performing teams share nearly twice as much negative feedback than the average teams. So if you want to be and want your team to be those high performing teams, it's really important that you try and create this positive feedback culture. Use Motivate to help you with that but also think about between motivates as well and how you can do that. So although the eight step system of motivate suggests that host feedback uh, should be near the end, it's actually not, not true. It's, it should be throughout the whole process. It's, it's a separate step simply because you know where to find the information if you need it, but really the feedback should be shared throughout from, from the host as you go along through the, through the reflection and all the other steps as well. And the, the feedback should be mostly positive um, so you can have the, the, the good uh, benefits of doing that as well. So as a host you really need to consider carefully the feedback discussions beforehand. Um, if you don't consider them they're likely to be more vague or you might deliver some feedback um, and it just doesn't sit how you wanted it to uh, and it could actually cause damage uh, than actually uh, be of benefit. So really do take that time to consider that feedback on what you're going to say. Earlier on, I mentioned about the BIC model, behaviour, impact and consequence. So now you would have read about that in the host pack. Um, but also, if you'd like some more information on this and how you can use this and how you can have great feedback conversations, please have a look at our recorded webinar, how to have a great feedback conversation, which you'll find amongst all the other materials on the learning zone. So on page 16, you'll find step seven, the uh, closed summary. Um, so this is the final stage of the conversation. Um, the rest after this is mostly done outside. And it's really a time then for you to really summarise hopefully what was a great conversation. There'll be some maybe some actions that were shared, just recapping everyone agree, knows what they're doing with those and also end on that positive note as well. As I said earlier, you may choose to use this opportunity to complete the documentation rather than completing it throughout. Um, and it's a really great opportunity as well to ask your colleague at this point, how was the motivate for them? Particularly if it's your first ones as well. Is there anything that you could do to improve it, it for them? Um, and it's just a great reflection. You can then go on and use that as part of your motivate with your line manager. And finally, we've got the eighth and final stage, 
um, record. So it's important that after you've done a motivate, you record it on the ESR the same way as the, you would have done with the old appraisal system. If you're not sure how to do this or you're new to this, on page 16, you'll see there's a link to the guidance document on how to do that. Um, it's really important that you do this. Um, I'm not sure you're aware, but it, it does affect pay progression. So in order for you to move up and your colleagues to move on up in the banding, up, up the levels in the banding, apologies, you will need to make sure that the uh, annual appraisal is completed, got, there's no formal disciplinary action live on the record, and that the statutory manager training is up to date as well. So as a, as a line manager as well, you also need to make sure that you've completed all the appraisals for your team. So from now on, all motivates for your team as well. Now, I don't mean three times a year motivates, but at least one motivate needs to be done for you to protect the pay progression of yourself and also of your colleagues as well. Um, also as well, uh, what's the really great thing about uh, motivate is because you're doing it three times a year, you're going to be uh, appraisal compliant, um, or, which would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Um, so you, you'd have that, that, you wouldn't have that to worry about at all. What we need to do as well towards in, the end in this record is make sure the documents are signed that you may have used um, and make sure that appropriate copies are given. So copies given to your colleague and then the copy is securely um, is, is stored securely in your area, as you would normally store your appraisal documents. OK, so we're coming to the end of the webinar now. So we're just going to summarise some of the, the key learning points. So just to clarify, Motivate is a replacement for the annual appraisal. Just need to do these three Motivate conversations per year, expected to last around 15 to 30 minutes. But don't forget to plan your dates in advance. Make that your one to do straight away um, as soon as you get started with this. Expect that first motivate to be longer than the rest. Um, and do warn your colleagues about this as well. Uh, you, it's the first time you do something always takes longer and you are becoming familiar with the process and getting familiar with the materials, as is your colleague as well. Um, so you might do the first one and think, gosh, that was nearly as long as an appraisal. Um, but be rest assured that once you get going with this, it will be much quicker and slicker. Be flexible with your motivate. Now, you've got to make it work for you. So you'll find that as you become familiar, you'll know that you won't need to spend as much time in certain sections or you might need to spend more time on certain sections with different people. Um, you may also feel that you wish to do more than three motivates a year with some people and it would be beneficial for them, um, particularly maybe someone who's new in role, for instance, um, or new to the organisation. Remember, the conversation is the most important thing. The paperwork is, is just a record. That's all it is. It's really not as important at all. So please ensure your notes are nice and brief. Don't go carried away with that. Make sure as well you share plenty of positive feedback during the Motivate, but also outside the Motivate as well. Get to get to grips with creating that positive feedback culture within your teams. So that is it. So if you need any further support, you can check out our other training uh, materials and webinars on the Mid Cheshire Learning Zone. Alternative, you can contact us on any of the details on the screen there. Thanks for watching.